Hello everybody and welcome back. Last episode couldn't have ended on a greater cliffhanger. Our party had thought they had killed the Goblin King in his throne room here. And we walked along and we fell down a massive trap here, which was cunningly contrived by the Hobgoblin King upon his death that this trap would activate. We plummeted down a 300 foot sliding chute into a small octagonal room. We tried to call up to Cullen de Filch, the only person left standing up here, to rescue us. He had other plans. He'd had decided he was just going to leave this party and run for it. So he tried to use his climb walls ability to creep along the walls past the trap. He failed 30 foot in and dropped. Well, that's his plan spoiled. And while he was trying to do that, we got set upon by berserkers. Two of them came running through a door and we had to fight them off. As we finished fighting them off, lo and behold, this errant thief came sliding down the chute just in time for the end of the fight. Okay, so that's what the makeup of the party is, and we find ourselves in this small octagonal room, and the door to the northeast has opened, and it leads into a cave system, and this cave system is very dark. Right, we have plenty of flasks of oil, so we need to light the lantern. Are we going to open doors randomly, or are we going to just follow this open door? Well, there may be berserkers behind every door. What we'll do is we'll have Liz listen at this door. And she doesn't hear anything. Carrick is going to open it. Malin is behind him with the lamp. And sure enough, it heads eastward into the dark. And it looks very much like the same cave system that's heading northwest from here. So I think we'll just go with the open door. This cave tunnel travels northwest for about 100 feet, curving slightly to the left, and it comes to a crossroads. We can see it going west-ish, north, but curving to the left, and there is an opening here. We get to about here, and Carrick tells Malin to shut out the lantern. He's going to use infravision to walk forward. When he gets to about here, he can see three warm bodies in the dark. They, unfortunately, could also see him, and they move forward. Carrick shouts back to Malin, The lamp! Turn on the lamp! Now let's roll for initiative. And they get initiative. Right, this is not looking good. Our party is not in a good way. So for the first turn, Carrick is going to walk backwards slowly while he gets beat upon by three bugbears. Bugbear one. These guys have a thaco of 16. That one misses. Second one hits and does 2d8 damage. Does he's down to eight? Right. And the third one hits as well. And our dwarf is down to one HP. Oh god. Right, this is not going too well. It's a hard turn, and the only thing Carrick can do is swig a potion of healing. Balan has flipped on the lamp. Potions, I think, will come in the same round as spells. Let's see if Sylvia can take a shot at one of these bugbears. She misses. Can Liz? She misses. Can uh, Gareth Ironhand? He misses. And can Cullen de Filch? Ah, he hits and he does three damage. So one is from 13 to 10 HP. Right, now it spells. Carrick. Drink that potion of healing. Oh, sweet. 
That is an extra seven points. He's back up to eight. Right, we're down a potion of healing. We do have a couple of staves of cure light wounds. Carrick has not touched any of those yet, so he has two rations of that. Now we're going to cast a spell. Don't normally cast. Apart from sleep, which has no saving throw. The spell, when cast on enemies, does have a saving throw, and it is old person. Donard has had this for many, many days, but he's never used it. And it can affect up to four humanoid type people and when you look at the list of humanoids it, it can affect it's quite long and that effect includes ogres and bugbears he casts old person into the middle of this fray of three bugbears and they each have a chance to make a saving throw with and they need a 17 or more and one saves and two don't. Right, so two bugbears are held frozen. Okay, so those two are paralyzed for nine turns. That is them out of the fight. Carrick has drunk its potion. Right, it's round two. And we get initiative. Right, we're gonna try all that archery again. Liz hits and does six damage. I'm gonna say the toughest one didn't get held. It has 16 HP. It is down to 10. Sylvia hits and does two damage. It is down to eight. These are good hits, by the way, even with Thacko penalty for the fact that Carrick is in the way and Donard has run up. They are easily hitting. AC5 Gareth He doesn't hit AC5 And Cullen Oh look at that Always hits And the bugbear is from 5 to 3 Okay Now Donard is going to Hits His Thaco is 15 So he hits AC5 and he does everything that's needed to kill that bugbear. Well, the other two are paralyzed and they can be dispatched at will. So let us drag the bodies off the corridor and into what is a small cave, about uh, 20, 30 feet by 10 feet. And this cave is filled with filth. It smells rank. We need somewhere to sleep and we can't clean this place. We're not in a good way. We're going to have to take some time to heal. We're going to cast two cure light wounds from the Staff of Healing on Carrick. He is from 8 HP. Right, and that's another 10. He's up to 18. <laughs> I didn't like him being down to 1 HP. We have two ways to go. We can either go due west or we can curve around to the north. Let's do our usual vote. One to three, north, east, and four to six, west. Everybody, for some reason, unanimously wants to go west. Okay, now we're gonna have to roll for a, a wandering monster because of the time it took to cure Carrick twice. And we don't find anything. Okay, so let us gather ourselves before we try and head down this corridor. This corridor goes for about, well, well, let's do 60 feet first. 60 feet is our one turn. I've spent one, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've already spent one hour in this place. So yes, if we go this far, this corridor bends northward for about 60 feet and it continues for another 60 feet, still bending to the northwest. And we come to a crossroads. We have a passage going east-ish north. We have one going due west and one going slightly 
southwest. Right, this is going to look like a mess. As we get to this junction, are we met by anything? And we aren't. It's good to have a dwarf in the party, because this dwarf can easily tell that this way... In fact, you don't really need to be a dwarf to know this, that we've come from the east, and if we go east again, we may end up back here. Okay, so let's travel east to see if that does indeed link up. And we go east for a bit, and then we go south for a bit, and then we find an opening into a cave. Right, let's all creep forward into this cave. This cave is described as empty, but by the time we get there, it may not be empty. And it is. So this cave is roughly a 30 foot area to the north and a slightly smaller piece to the southeast. And this cave is described as a, a large cavern and the floor is clean of debris. This, I think, will be our sanctuary to sleep in, as though it's as good as it's going to get. And we'll send out a little party to check here. And sure enough, we recognise, well, especially from the smell and bits of <laughs> left behind a bugbear, maybe a finger or something, that yes, this did indeed tie up. Right. So we're going to have to rest for the evening. Does anybody else need a staff of healing? Yes, Liz could do with one. She has one left. She gets three points. She is up to 15. Sylvia could do with one. <laughs> oh, look at that. Sylvia throws a one. She is up to 13, which is close to her max of 14. Colin de Filch, who only has 7 HP, is up to max. Gareth Arnhand is up, also up to 13. Donard is at 18, but he has used up all his charges and we don't have any cure like wooden spells left. So that is the party as they bed down for the night. Let's see where they disturbed in the middle of the night. And they weren't. Let's see if they get up in the morning. And they are. Right. So now this is convenient because everybody was awake. This is first thing in the morning. They just girded themselves up and armed themselves. What have we got? There is a new wandering monster table for this level. And it's berserkers. And it's three of them. Okay. And I have HP of 9, 7 and 6. And an AC of 7. And a Thaco of 18. Right. And their damage here is done as 1d8. I'm going to check to see if that fits in with the DM manual. Ah, uh, they get a plus 2 to their hit rolls. But they don't get plus 2 for damage. Right, so their Thaco was actually 16. Right, let's see for surprise. And there is no surprise. Let's see for initiative. We get initiative. Right, I'm going to do three archers. Liz. And with all her bonuses, hits AC7. Um, she gets 4, minus 3 for cover, and that's 12, which is AC7, and she does 7 damage. She takes out 1 Berserker immediately. Cullen. No, he misses. Gareth. Oh yes, hits and takes 1 from 9 to 7. We have Donard on melee. Who hits and kills one. He does 8 damage. He kills the one that was on 7 HP. And we're going to have Sylvia use a sword. And she's pretty damn good with the sword. Shame she did 1 damage. 
I'm the same for Carrick, who hit his thaco is 13. He hits AC 6 and he kills that berserker. Okay, well, there you go. It's three dead berserkers. Now we have rested and Sylvia has learnt her new spell, which was Phantasmal Force. She has not copied any spells from scrolls into her book, so she doesn't know the web, and Mad Malin doesn't know the magic missile that we have on a scroll. But I think during the night, Malin might have leveled up. Let us check on that, back in a minute. Right, I went off and did my calculations, and Malin has indeed leveled up. He has crept over the 10,000 XP mark by 230 XP. That happened at the end of last time when they were here at the bottom of the chute. But I didn't do the level up until after he's rested, so he won't get the benefits of any spells today until they rest again, but he will get his new HP. He currently has a low constitution because he was the only one cursed by the magical fountain upstairs. So he has seven, that is temporarily down to four. Magic users are weak, please make this a good one. Oh, excellent, four. So he's up to 11. That means he's got an extra three for today because he loses one due to his cursed constitution. So he is from four to seven. But what will his new spell be? He can now cast two second level spells he has web invisibility and mirror image. He has memorized one web, doesn't get to memorize a second one until he rests again. Unfortunately, he didn't realize he had leveled up until too late. What will I give him for another new spell? We've got continual light, right, okay. Detect evil, right. ESP, detect invisibility, knock, levitate, locate object or wizard lock there's phantasmal force but i've given that to sylvia knock or detect invisibility i'm really all of the ones that we don't have to me anyway seem of equal value these ones are very adventure utility spells locate object unlock doors esp detect thoughts they're very situational Levitate, that seems probably the most unusual. But I think I'm gonna go for knock. What does a knock spell do? This spell will open any type of lock, any normal or magically locked door, and that includes old portal and wizard lock, and any secret door after it's been found can be opened. Any lock in magic will remain, however, and will take effect again when the door is closed. This spell will also cause a gate to open even stuck and will cause any treasure chest to open easily. Now this is the good bit. It will also cause a barred door to open, magically forcing the bar to fall to the floor. If the door is locked and barred, both will be opened. So this means if you come across a door and it's barred on the other side, well, you can open it. I think I'm going to go for this knock. So Malin has learnt knock, but he can't memorize it until he sleeps again. Now the other thing about resting is that we have all our healing spells back and our sleep spells. So we have two magic missiles from Sylvia and a phantasmal force. We have two sleep and a web from Malin. We have two cure light wounds and a hold person from Donard. And we have two staves of healing. And we're ready to go again. So let us make our way all the way back to here and let us roll for wandering monsters. And we don't find any. And we have got this way where we reckon we've been before. We have a westish way which sort of curls north and a southwester way that curves a bit. Which way are we gonna go? Let's do one to three west. Four to six southwest. Our two retainers have resigned themselves to the fact that they don't get a vote. 
Okay, it's not quite unanimous. Malin wanted to go southwest, but everybody else wants to go west. And this corridor goes north and curls south again for about 60 feet, which brings us to here. And then it opens up into a wider cave to the southwest for about 50 feet. And the cave is about 30 feet wide. And what do we see in here? What do we see here? We see nothing because the cave curls round. So let us, in our usual formation, walk around here. I think we're going to have Sylvia on swords. I think three archers is more than enough. Gareth Ironhand has 10 HP. Sylvia has 13 and she's got far better armor. Now as we walk around here, cave continues north for about another 40 feet. It's about 20 feet wide. And right at the very end, gathered over some corpses, are three ghouls. Now they might have heard us before we hear them. Let's double check on this. Right, the ghouls are squatting around a pile of miscellaneous bones. Unless the characters are very noisy, check normally for surprise. In any case, the ghouls attack on sight. Well, we weren't. We have been doing our slow creeping speed. So let us fight these ghouls. They have AC of six. They do three attacks and can paralyze. Sylvia is immune to ghoul paralysis. And there's four of them. And we get initiative. Right. So let's open up with archery. Liz misses. That goal of minus one penalty. She missed. Because Donard and Carrick aren't quite there yet. Colin misses. So Liz would have hit. Gareth Ironhand misses. Okay. So that's three failed attempts at archery. Let's move in with melee. No, let's do magic spells. Of course, we have a level four cleric. His turn on dead for ghouls is he automatically turns them. The ghouls, they have two hit dice each. He, there are four of them. That's a total of eight hit, eight hit dice. And he turns all of them. Right now they run into the corner and I think we're going to let them run in there and stay turned and will we do the whole flask of oil thing? Yeah, I think we will. So the next round, Carrick is not going to move forward to engage them because one of them may turn round and attack him. He doesn't have a ranged weapon. He gave his crossbow to Gareth Ironhand. Round number two, let's throw the flask of oil into the corner where these ghouls are. And Liz can do it. And if she throws a one, she misses. Well, she throws an 18. I don't know what systems other people use for throwing a flask of oil at a floor, but she does so. So that's her turn. Let's have Cullen throw a lighted torch. And he easily aims as well. Now the puddle of oil only is a three foot diameter. That is not big. That would be enough maybe to capture two of them. And they will keep burning in that oil for two turns. So let's see what damage they do. So that is round two. Round three is the two of them which are each in the oil are going to take 1d8 damage. And that's a seven and a six. So one is from 10 to three, one is from eight to two. Then we are gonna take four archers on the non-burning ones. We've got Liz who hits and does six damage. One is from 13 to seven. Sylvia's on that one. And she gets plus one for short range, plus one for her new longbow which is 12, and that's a miss. We have Cullen, who gets one for dex and short range, that's a 13. He hits AC6, one is from five to six. Okay, round number four, 
So the second round in the burning oil is enough to kill those two ghouls. And let's see if we can finish these with archery. Um, Liz misses. Sylvia misses. Cullen misses. Gareth hits and kills one. There's one ghoul left. We're just going to sit here and pepper it with arrows until it dies. One wonders how many rounds that will take. We'll try round five. Liz misses. Sylvia misses. Cullen hits. It's from seven to five. And Gareth hits and kills it. Okay, so they're dead. We have to search these corpses that the ghouls were hunched over. Right, the party search the corpses here and they find some coins and treasure. Probably about 200 gold worth of coins plus a pearl necklace that might be worth something. There's also a short sword which is battered and corroded but Sylvia notices the hilt is quite ornate. She lifts it up and says, look at this. It seems unusual that such a sword should be so abandoned. But when you look at the hilt, it has very fine, ornate metalwork on it, twisted threads of wire, which have been turned into ornate knotwork. The jewels, which were clearly there, once have been knocked out, but, well, it had something going for it. So she pockets that, because the sort of work, the metalwork, the twisted wire and knotting, the patterning reminds Sylvia of, well, home. Well, we leave. We have only one place to go, and it's back there, and at our small creeping pace. By the time we get to this junction... <laughs> and it's wandering monster time. And it is berserkers. One to four berserkers. Four of them? Right. Okay. Now, who gets surprise? And we surprise them. Good. We have three frontliners and three melee and a mage with a lantern. Right. Let's do our three archers. And of course, I'm applying this minus three Thaco. They still get their plus one for short range. So it's a minus two Thaco. Liz misses. Cullen hits and does two damage. They have nine, seven, six, and four HP. He's taken one from nine to seven. And Gareth misses. He's not really that great with a crossbow. We're told that his hammer is his natural weapon. But let's go for Donard. Who <laughs> misses? Don't you just love when a surprise round goes down the drain? Sylvia misses. Yeah. And Carrick. Who hits AC7. And Berserkers have AC7. And he does enough damage to kill one. So there's one on Donard, one on Carrick, and one on Sylvia. So this is round one. And it's mutual. We'll do them first. Now they get plus two to their Thaco. So it is essentially 16. And that misses Carrick. That misses Donard. And that misses Sylvia. She has AC4. Right, our turn. Three archers. Liz hits and kills one. She kills the one that's on Donard. Cullen hits, kills another one. And 
let's see if Gareth Arnahand can keep up this. Mm, no, he can't. He misses. So there's one left on Sylvia. It only has 4 HP. Donard cleans it out with one swipe. So that's four Berserkers dead. And Wandering Monsters never really have any treasure type. Now the only way we haven't been is down here. So we're going to creep down here and it sort of goes in a southwesterly way. That would be south southwest, I think. Anyway, we'll do another 60 feet and then sort of after 60 feet it starts to go due south for another 60 feet. We have another check for wandering monsters. There aren't any. And then it goes, continues south for about another 30 feet. And then it does a sharp turn to the east and back up to the north. And then, well, we're following this along. It seems truly bizarre. We can see it go north again and turn a corner. Well, we do that. We follow it round this corner and it continues eastward and ahead of us we see a door but by the time we see the door is there anything on this side of it? There is. <laughs> no. Okay, uh, this session I, and it is, it's Piranha Birds which is 1d4 plus 3. There's four of them. These birds must be perched on a wall. Let's read up about Piranha Birds. They may get a surprise bonus. No, they don't. Oddly enough, their combat description here is not the same as the combat description here, nor was it when we met them in the aviary above. So they have hit points 4, 3, 3 and 2. These are half hit dice monsters with a thaco of 19. Right. Let's see who has surprise. Um, they surprise us. So I'm going to do one on Carrick. Misses. One on Donna. Misses. One on Sylvia. Misses. And another one on Carrick. That misses. Okay, that's the surprise round over. They get initiative. These things are hot on us. So there's two on Carrick. It's a miss. That's a miss. There's one on Donard. It's a miss. And there's one on Sylvia. And that's a miss. Right. Let's see if we can pick these things out of the air with our bows. Because they are flying at head height or above, I'm not going to... I'm going to reduce the thackle penalty for cover to just minus one. Because there's a good chance they will actually be above the heads of the party members. And that is Liz, and she kills one. Thackle penalties or not. Cullen misses. Gareth. Look at that. Two max dice. Kills another. Malin, excited by this, is going to throw a dagger. Oh, and he misses. I think that was going to roll into a 20. Right. But we're going to swat at the air with our melee weapons. And Donard's going to try and hammer one. And he misses. There's one on Sylvia. Oh, and she hits and kills it. And that just leaves one on Carrick. And he hits. Just chops its head off in mid-flight. And the body drops to the floor and the head drops somewhere else. So that was four piranha birds. These wandering monsters are keeping us on our toes. While we listen at this door... And Liz hears nothing, so Carrick opens it, and we find ourselves back in to this room. 
our party are bewildered and that is where we're going to leave it for today so we've opened this door and this door there are six left how are we going to get out of this maze well we'll find out next time fingers crossed <laughs>